Hello and welcome back to the NBC Sports Podcast. Andrew Silver alongside Connell Scruggs, J.P. Eisenhower, and Andrew Feeney back for week nine on the NBC Sports Podcast as we get prepared to preview Marist versus Arabia Mountain taking place Friday at 5.15 from Halford Stadium in Clarkston, Georgia. Uh, note that 5.15 time due to playing in a public stadium two games a day. Um, so be sure to Get everything out of your schedule. Get ready for a 5:15 football game. Tune in on the NFHS Network. We remind you of our standings here on the podcast. I'm in first with 41 points. Connell, 37. JP, 35. And Feeney, 30 on our picks. Connell, Arabia Mountain, a team that honestly has surprised us so far this year, coming off a massive 40-20 uh, to 20 win over Mays last week. That actually pretty much locked up a playoff spot for them now they're competing for third or fourth likely um if they can beat hateful later on the season um that would probably get them the third spot what have you seen out of this arabia mountain rams team so far this season that's what uh, that you've liked well on the offensive side they're a pretty balanced offensive team uh they mix the ball in the rushing game uh they mix the ball around four different running backs and then in the passing game they started off with quarterback Damian Fitzpatrick in the first game and then went away from him after he threw three interceptions in the first game and uh, went more toward Brandon Adams. He's a senior. Um, he is also plays cornerback. He's a great runner in the open field. He's got pretty good speed. A lot of their offense revolves around short passes, quick throws, getting got, uh, getting the ball to their playmakers quickly, um, if you will. He doesn't really push the ball down the field much, but when he does, he's pretty pretty decent at it. He puts the ball in a good spot. He's got a little good... He's got good touch. So... I think, you know, they're pretty impressive. They're fundamentally sound. I think one of their weaknesses is in the run game blocking. Their offensive line's a little weak there, and I think Maris can take advantage of that. But other than that, they're a pretty, pretty decent team in, in most facets of the game. JP, your thoughts on this offense and how explosive they can be? Yeah, this offense has really taken off the past couple of weeks. I mean, you look at it, they scored 27 combined points the first three games, but then scored 40 points last week. I think one problem that still continues is even with the great offensive performance versus Mays, they did still have a third down efficiency problem. They were only three for 10, but one player who really stood out in that game, Tawan Rome, he had seven receptions for 128 yards and four touchdowns last week. He was, looked really great and against Mays, but we really haven't seen him for much of the season. We really haven't seen this offense for much of the season. Yeah, and I think the a big key for Arabia Mountain and for all teams that face Marist is in the trenches. You have to step up. You have to compete because if not, you're just going to get run over. You're not going to be able to stop this Marist offense if you can't get pressure on the quarterback and stop the run up the middle. Um, just too much to de defend against there. One thing for Marist in the trenches, Davis McKenna out for the year with the torn ACL, unfortunately. Tough news out of that Hapeville game. Connell, I think it's expected that Marist will shift Steven Namias out of right guard into left tackle bring in Ryan Fewen to start at right guard. Any concerns for you now for this offensive line, especially given that uh, Fewen will be starting both sides of the ball? Um, Not really concerned skill-wise because I think Nami is obviously an extremely talented player on the offensive line. They're going to move him to tackle. You kind of want to have your skill guys on the tackle positions, you know, protecting the edge. And Fewen, you know, he's a dog. We've learned that this year on the defensive line. His performance is he can really get after it. And so, I mean, I th when you bring up playing both sides of the ball, I think that's my only concern. Maybe they're going to have to ro rotate a few more players in on defense to kind of keep him fresh for the offensive performance. Yeah, as we take a look at this, for the 4A composite rankings, uh, still Maris Jefferson at the top two, as they have been for most of the season, 4-0 and and 5-0 and respectively. Carver Columbus, 4-0. and Stevenson, 2-0. and uh, rather 3 and 0 I believe coming off a win against Miller Grove 19 to 7 they still haven't given up any defensive points their issues come offensively they only scored 7 against Arabia Mountain winning 7 to 0 so they need to step up the offensive production but we will see a massive game between Marist and Stevenson uh currently number 1 versus number 4 in 4A that'll likely determine the region championship in a few weeks Benedictine at 5, 5 and 2. They've dropped a couple games since starting undefeated. Flowery Branch at 6, Bainbridge at 7. They've had a tough drop through the rankings so far this year. Look to rebound in region play. Islands at 8, Cedartown at 9, and Baldwin jumps into the top 10 this week for the first time this season. 
as we transitioned into our games of the week this week. Starting off with the big one on ESPN2 this Friday night. JP, it's Grayson and Parkview. Long time. Uh, big time matchup between two perennial powerhouses in 7A. Grayson number two in 7A at 6-0. and Parkview number 11 at 5-1. and Yeah, and I think in this game, I'm going to take Grayson. They're scoring 37 points per game and only allowing 11 points per game. And when you look at it, they have a four-star Clemson commit at running back. They beat South Gwinnett last week 42-7, to and they've really been able to get uh, production out of all of their offensive players. I just don't think Parkview can keep up with this Grayson team. Yeah, I agree with you. And Grayson, with the transfer of Jake Garcia, a USC-committed quarterback who came to Georgia from California this season to play for Rush Probst and Valdosta, ruled ineligible, somehow gained eligibility when he transferred to Grayson. Um, yeah, that makes no sense. Uh, but he's a talented player nonetheless and will definitely help them. I'm not sure he's playing this week. I'm not sure he's officially been approved to play, and he hasn't been with the team for very long. So I'm not positive he's playing, but I would. it's very likely you see him playing before the end of the regular season and into the playoffs, making Grayson potentially the top contender for the 7A title. I like Grayson in this one. Just too many weapons to defend against. Exactly. I, I mean, that that's perfect. I, I agree. There's so many weapons on every side of the ball, both sides of the ball, wide receiver, running back, now picking up Jake Garcia at quarterback position. I mean, this team is going to be a force later in the season. Give me Grayson over Parkview, but they will have to stop Parkview's strong running attack. Yeah, I agree with you guys. I'm going to go Grayson. Back to you, Feeney, here for... Another big one in uh, 7A this week is the um, GPB game of the week, number six, North Gwinnett, and uh, number 14, Collins Hill. North Gwinnett suffered two tough losses early in the season that bumped them, I think, I believe, to five and two so far this year. So it's going to be interesting to see how this one pans out. Collins Hill comes in also five and two. Yeah, you know, it's a great matchup tomorrow night. I mean, you got, comp- I, in my opinion, pretty opposite teams. North Gwinnett is known for their defense, and Collins Hill has a great offense this year. Um, but North Gwinnett's defense is just insane. They're led by linebacker Barrett Carter and cornerback Jordan Hancock. Carter is committed to Clemson, and Hancock is committed to Ohio State. So you could say, I mean, they're pretty good players. Um, and uh, although looking at Collins Hill, they're they're led by a quarterback, Sam Horn. And he has nearly 2,600 passing yards and 16 touchdowns through the season so far which is pretty crazy. And they got uh, on the outside, they got their wide receiver, leading wide receiver, Travis Hunter, who has nearly 800 receiving yards and 11 of those 16 touchdowns. Um, It's going to be a really good game, but I really, I you know, North Gwinnett didn't have Carter and Hancock early in the season, but they got them both back now. I expect them to step up this week and showcase the, uh, why they're committed to Clemson and Ohio State. So... I think that defense wins championships. I'm going North Gwinnett. What about you? I got North Gwinnett in a blowout here. I have North Gwinnett. I had North Gwinnett winning the 7A state championship. Jake Garcia transfer might uh, influence that a little (laughs) bit, but I'll stick with the North Gwinnett winning the 7A championship, and I I think they won in a blowout fashion against Collins Hill. You're right. I'm going to agree with you. Go with North Gwinnett here. I think, you know, the defense has been consistent all year. Offense has been pretty inconsistent um but i think you know if that offense catches catches their stride early in the game they got a chance to blow them out like you think but even if they don't i still think north gwinnett's got this game yeah and i don't think collins hill on defense really poses a huge threat to north gwinnett i think north gwinnett's going to be able to get that offense going and i think north gwinnett's defense is going to be able to ground this collins hill offense i really think that when you have a great defense going up against a great offense great defense will win most of the time and now the top game in uh, 5A would have been the second best game in 5A, um, except the Blessed Trinity Cartersville matchup that was likely for the region title there. Um, postponed slash canceled due to COVID concerns. We'll see if they're able to make that one up. Uh, but Ware County taking on Warner Robins. Ware County number one in 5A, 6-0. and And Warner Robins number three, four and two. This is... I know I know the Cartersville Blessed Trinity Calhoun region is just lethal. This might be the best top to bottom region in 5A 
Ware County, Warner Robins, Veterans, Coffee, and Wayne County. Each of those five teams is in a top 10 poll, one of the few that exist in Georgia high school football. Um, so top to bottom, I think all five of those teams are competitive and should make the playoffs. Unfortunately, one won't. Um, but this one likely determines the region title with the top two teams in Ware County and Warner Robins. Each team is led by a very good quarterback. Warner Robins led by Jalen Addy, over 900 yards passing and 400 plus yards rushing. Thomas Castellanos, on the other hand, for Ware County, over 1,500 passing yards and 600 rushing yards on the season. Both very big threats in this one. I have Warner Robins, both teams with tons of experience so far in the season, though. I mean, Ware County seems like they're playing big games every single week. Warner Robins has played the best of the best of competition in Valdosta, Lee County, and others. Um, so both teams are certainly prepared for this game. I have Warner Robins, though. I'm actually going to disagree with you, Cello. Uh, I'm going to pick Ware County. I think last week versus Coffee, that was kind of the first time they played a legit defense. Coffee, you know, has one of the most powerful defenses um, in 5A, and I think. Ware County proved that they can compete at that level. Thomas Castellanos has kind of been catching fire in the last few games, and I think that's going to be important coming into this game versus Warner Robins. We saw Warner Robins give Valdosta a run for their money early in the season, only losing by three. But then they lost to Lee County again, which is another talented team. Um, I think in every other game, they've blown everyone out. But, you know, in those two games where they've received some real competition, uh, they've shown weakness. And I think Ware County riding off the hot streak, they might be able to take this one from Warner Robins and take the region. Yeah, uh, I'm going to stick with Ware County here. I've picked Ware County, I think, two or three times so far this season, and they haven't let me down yet. So, I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So, Yeah, I'm also going to pick Ware County. They beat five ranked teams out of six games this year in the regular season. That's a regular season record. They're a proven team, and they're about to add to that record and pad it with a six-ranked win versus Warner Robins. My one reason for picking Warner Robins was I watched some of that Ware County game last week against Coffee, and it was sloppy, sloppy out of both teams, but not what I expected out of a number one ranked team in 5A. Uh, but I think it's definitely maybe the best matchup in the state this week. Um, should be closer than the other two games we just picked. As we uh, make the move into college football here for a minute, uh, I guess the game of the week in college football, Penn State, Ohio State, not too many great games this week, Connell, but uh, top 25 ranked teams, Ohio State number three, Penn State coming off tough loss to Indiana. Yep. Uh, this game before this week had a lot of momentum going into it, um, except Ohio State, they did what? what everyone expected to do blue Nebraska out, you know, kind of warmed up in the first half showed a little bit of, they were a little bit rusty in the first half, but everyone expects that first game of the season. And then that offense started to look really good in the second half. So Ohio state's just about where we expected them. Penn state, however, showed a lot of weakness last week um, versus Indiana. And they are really hurting in that running back position right now. They're down to their fourth string. I believe running back, although Sean Clifford, the quarterback, he's been a highlight for Penn state so far this season played well against Indiana. But, you know, I just think, Normally, this game would be a whiteout at Penn State. It'd be over 100,000 people in that stadium. The, these games have been typically really close in, in past years versus Ohio State. But without that push from the fans, I just I don't really see Penn State putting up a fight against Ohio State. I think they're going to cover, too, that 12-point that spread. I got Ohio State in this one. Yeah, I think it's a closer game than a lot of people think just because it's Penn State, Ohio State. And Penn State's going to have motivation coming off that Indiana loss. I think Indiana's better than a lot of people think. Um, I, I will take Ohio State here um, in picking it, but I'll come back to that game in a minute for my upset pick. Okay. I'm going to go with, I'm gonna go with Penn, uh, Ohio State in this one. You know, you look at it, and it, uh, like you said, it's not going to be as big of a blowout as people think. I mean, Ohio State's a great team, but in my opinion, they're nowhere near as... I mean, they're good, but they're not as good as they were last year. They're really lacking the pass rushers off the outside. So, And and in interior D-line is not that great. And I was expecting coming into this one, if Penn State was one, had won last week against Indiana, for Penn State to be able to run the ball successfully against Ohio State, and it was going to be a close game. However, 
COVID injuries, Penn State's down to their fourth string running back. Ohio State still has a decent defensive line. Ohio State is going to win this one. Yeah, I mean, Ohio State looked like they were just getting that pass offense started versus Nebraska. That Fields only had one incompletion the entire game. I think the only main concern for Ohio State for me on offense is their run game. I mean, it really has not looked as good as it has in the past few years. I think with Penn State, I think we can all agree they should have won that game. I think that that ball was out of bounds before he crossed the pylon, but I think <laughs> it, it, was. it was. It was. I don't know how they called that. But. Yeah, the the rule is when the ball passes out of bounds, not when the ball touches out of bounds. So that was definitely before the pylon. But I just I don't see Penn State being able to pull off an upset over Ohio State, even if they win last week. And I do think Indiana was definitely a better team than a lot of people thought coming into it. Feeney, back to you. Texas, Oklahoma State, very uh, intriguing game as most games are in the Big 12. Yeah, you know, that's a great way to describe it, an intriguing game. <laughs> it is. I feel that Texas has proven themselves to be one of the most average teams in college football. I mean, Sam Ellinger, he, uh, he's an above-average quarterback, and he has good weapons around him, but the defense is average at best. It's like Auburn. Yeah. <laughs> average. Yeah, it's like, I mean, o- Oklahoma State... They have a, so far this season, I mean, they haven't played great, great defense, uh, great offenses, but they have a very good defense so far. And uh, Chubba Hubbard, he's a uh, first round talent, in my opinion, maybe late second round. I mean, late, early, late first round, early second round. Um, And he hasn't really been able to get loose this week, the, uh, so far yet this year. Um, I think that this, this week is the week where he blows up and he, uh, goes for over 175 yards i think Ooh. oklahoma state will pull this one out against texas <laughs> dang 175 yeah i think texas shows up in a big way this week mm-hmm. i think they've uh been just put out of the picture um after the loss to oklahoma and i think average is a good way to describe them i think they have the weapons to be good though and i think they are good at times and i think they will be good this week that doesn't mean they'll be good the rest of season they probably won't but i think they show up and i think they upset oklahoma state basically eliminating the big 12's chances in the playoff uh, that's not a horrible pick yeah not at all because big 12 always has the possibility of teams showing up some weeks and then not the other week they're so inconsistent but you know what i think the biggest thing in this game is the run defense for texas that that's going to be the key to this game when it's good texas mm-hmm. wins when it's not texas loses they're zero and two when they allow more than 200 yards on the ground and three and zero when they don't the problem is Oklahoma State's a very good rushing team. <laughs> that that is a huge problem. So I think I I don't know about 175 yards. I'll give you I'll I'll say 125 for Chuba Hubbard. And I think I think Oklahoma State has a field day on on Texas's weak run defense and they win this game. You know this is a trap game just because of how bad the Big 12 has been all season. I still don't think an Oklahoma State that's undefeated should be in the playoffs because I don't think the Big 12 is good at all this year. I don't want to see it. They're going to be in the playoffs, but I don't want to see it. Well, they're just not going to be undefeated, so no, they won't be in the yeah. playoffs. Well, Spencer Sanders, I mean, he's looked inconsistent, but he's shown some flashes. I think Chuba Hubbard's really the only reason I'm picking Oklahoma State in this. That and their defense. I mean, it's fine. defense is finally making an appearance in the Big 12, and Oklahoma State's <laughs> looked, <laughs> they've looked pretty well. I mean, they looked pretty they've good looked, on defense it, so far. That's what I was trying to say. Like, they've looked good, but again, I, you just don't, you don't know. know. You just don't know. Like, you never know. You just don't know what you're going to get. Yeah, it's like Auburn. Will they show up this week? Maybe, maybe not. That's the Big 12 in a nutshell. Will they show up this week? Don't know. Yeah, that's why we see so many upsets in the Big 12, honestly. Um, We'll take, speaking of upsets, let's take our upset picks this week. I'm going back to that Penn State-Ohio State game. I think if I was asked to pick the game, I would pick Ohio State, but asked which game this week has the most potential being a big upset. 10-point underdogs. I like Penn State's uh, chances compared to the rest of the underdogs this week in getting the upset. I am going to go with Arkansas over Texas A&M. I think Arkansas, they deserve to be a 3-1 and one team right now, um, but they just got robbed in that Auburn game. So I'm I'm saying that's a 3-1 and one team. They should be ranked. Not the only robbery we've seen in yep. an Auburn game uh, this Yeah, year. Auburn's been very fortunate with referees. Um, but yeah, this... I mean, realistically, this is a three and one Arkansas taking on a Texas A&M team that's also lost one game. Um, I think Texas A&M they they've shown flashes recently, um, but you know, Kellen Mond always has those few games that 
that he looks really good in them and in some and then other games he's like wow like wow why do we think this guy's so good so i think arkansas this might be one of those games for kellen mon they might take advantage here give me arkansas yeah i really i really like that pick that was a great pick um i i'm gonna take syracuse over wake forest wake forest favored by 11 i don't think wake forest has any means being favored by that much honestly i think that I mean, what uh, what do they have to show for that? But, Hartman. Hartman's yeah. pretty good at quarterback, I think. Okay. But, I mean, <laughs> Syracuse literally, I mean, they played pretty decent against Clemson. They gave them a run for their money. Played very well in the first half against North Carolina. If they can get some consistency throughout the ball game, I could see them easily beating Wake Forest. Yeah, and for me, I'm going to take Mizzou over Florida in this one. I mean, you look at how they played Shocker. the past two games. Upset Kings. They beat LSU in a shootout, and they pounded the ball against Kentucky in the run game and on defense, and they beat both of them in upset wins. They've shown the ability to win on through the air and on the ground and with defense, and Mizzou always plays well against Florida for some reason. With a top-10 Florida team, an unranked Mizzou came in and beat them, uh, completely blew them out in 2018. And then I think Connor Bazelak has been a steady presence at quarterback ever since he came in. And I, I mean, when you look at how Mizzou held the ball versus Kentucky, they held the ball for 43 minutes and Kentucky only ran 36 plays. The way to beat Florida's offense is by just not letting them on the field. Right. JP, you like to pick Missouri in upset picks. Have they ever gotten you a point? I've only picked them twice. Oh, wait. I've no, picked them you've twice never before. gotten an upset He's pick, only right. picked them twice in an I've upset I've only picked pick. them twice no, before. No, and they have let you down both times. They have. As have I should, all the I picked te- them the wrong week. All- I picked them over Tennessee <laughs> the very next as week. As have upset all LSU. the teams you've picked in upset picks. Just letting you down. It's okay. You'll get one one day. I don't do it. Maybe. Maybe. (laughs) Running out of time. There's a big asterisk there. (laughs) Running out of time. Uh, That'll pretty much do it this week. Once again, Marist, Arabian Mountain. Tomorrow, Friday, 5.15. Note, 5.15 start time. Halford Stadium. NFHS Network. Connell and I on the call. Uh, should be a good one. Good to be back with Marist football again this week after an off week last week. Um, and theoretically, we should have a straight run from now until the end of the season um, with games. Shouldn't be met any more off uh, weeks, but you never know with COVID. Uh, but that'll pretty much do it here for the NBC Sports Podcast. On behalf of Connell Scruggs, Andrew Feeney, and J.P. Eisenhower, my name's Andrew Silver, signing off for today.